So recently I was watching a little documentary about a Hawaiian musician, probably heard of him, Jack Johnson. And within that documentary, Jack starts to talk about how he got into being a musician. So he was actually first interested in filmmaking and he would travel all around the world with his buddies filming them surfing. And he would also bring a guitar with him everywhere he went. He talked about how every day he would write songs and just play music and he started to grow more and more in love with it as he continued. He then goes on to tell a story about how him and his friends were flying overseas to a surf competition in Australia. You know how when you're flying into another country, you have to fill out those immigration forms on the airplane before you arrive in the destination? Well, on that form, there's a line that asks you what your occupation is. At the time, Jack didn't really know. He didn't really have a clear direction of what he wanted to do. And he knew he loved music and he thought to himself, kind of hesitated a bit. I just remember like starting it and almost stopping and being like, I guess I'm writing this as a musician. You know, <laughs> I, I guess that's what I am. <laughs> The rest of his history, he went on to sell millions and millions of records and has become one of the most recognizable names in all of music. Especially if you're like someone like me. I don't know if like, if you live in India or like Russia or something, if you know who Jack Johnson is. So I bring up this story just because of how beautifully simple it was and because just how similar it was to my situation. These questions like, who are you? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do for the rest of your life? These sound like these like grandiose existential questions that are so intimidating to think about. So I want to look a little more closely into Jack Johnson's airplane immigration decision. He's passionate about music. He loved playing music. He loved sharing music. He didn't know if there would be any money in music, didn't know if it would ever work out for him, but he decided that he was gonna be a musician. There you go, there's the deep dive. We analyzed his decision before I even had the splice in the edit of this video. Can that decision, can that what do I wanna be for the rest of my life decision be that simple to answer for everyone? So I watched the video once, no idea what that video was or where I can find it or who, who made up this quote. But the quote was this, if money wasn't an issue, what would you want to do for the rest of your life. This might not be the first time you've ever heard this quote, but for me hearing that as a 21 year old who felt just like a little directionless in life, hearing this meant a whole lot to me. I knew I wasn't very good at singing. Kind of pretty crap at singing actually, but that was okay because I knew that I was in love with something else. I knew that I was in love with creating videos. It's actually something I knew I loved pretty early on. I used to make like little stupid parody parkour videos with my friends back in eighth grade. I had no idea how much money people were making who shot videos. I had no idea if I'd ever be able to make a livable wage off of making videos. No idea if it would ever work out for me, if I would even be halfway decent at it. But I did know that it was something that I loved to do. It was something that I knew I would be happy doing for the rest of my life. I took a photo camera. I learned how to shoot videos on it. I got myself non-video related jobs so I could pay the bills while I learned everything there was to learn about filmmaking. I then chose to identify myself as someone who makes videos. I started calling myself a filmmaker. It became my online presence. It became like the circles that I hung around, it became what I watched on TV and YouTube, it became what I told people I did for a living. Then eventually after a while, the paid gig started to come in organically organically and it started to actually become my real job, my main source of income. Like I didn't wait until I made these like giant epic films to call myself a filmmaker. I didn't wait until I was a master at it. I didn't wait for it to become my main source of income. I loved it. I committed to it and it worked out. Human beings are incredible at doing the things that they love to do, no matter who you are. If you really love and care about something, you will be amazing at that thing. So now we've arrived at the self-doubt portion of the video. Real quick, before we dive into that, I wanna thank Skillshare for both sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Being a very curious individual, I'm very thankful to have a platform like Skillshare. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people such as illustration, photography, filmmaking, freelancing in general, and so much more. One class in particular that I have personally been enjoying is called Documenting Your Life by Nathaniel Drew. Nathaniel is like a brilliant instructor and someone that I see a lot of myself in. Nathaniel does such a beautiful job in breaking down the steps of how to live a more intentional life. Since I've seen this course, I'm finding myself just taking more simple photos and videos, even with just my phone. And it's such a beautiful gift to be able to remember like this amazing life that I'm living. And I'm really just thankful that I stumbled upon this class through Skillshare. And Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first thousand of my subscribers who click the link in my description will get a free trial to a premium membership to further explore their creativity and just, you know, maybe live a more intentional life like I am now. So yeah, back to our favorite topic, self-doubt. 
<laughs> so when you're deciding what it is that you want to do for the rest of your life, the decision is a simple part, but the process, the journey along the way is not so simple and a little more complex. There were certainly moments of the imposter syndrome when people asked me what I did or I was surrounded by other filmmakers and people in the video production sphere. It made me like super uncomfortable to explain at family gatherings what it was that I did. It was really hard to explain to people that I was a filmmaker who quote unquote didn't make like technically actual films. But it always helped me to know that anyone, anyone who's done anything who has ever made a name for himself in a specific field has always started at zero. I obviously started at zero. At one point in my life, I never held a camera before. Tom Brady, at one point in his life, had never thrown a single football. Also, it doesn't matter if you're a filmmaker who doesn't make typical Hollywood films. It doesn't matter if you're a dancer who only dances on TikTok. It's 2021. The world is no longer black or white. Put cream in your coffee if you want to. You can interpret the path that you choose whichever way that you want to. I mean, really at the end of the day, everything's just like kind of made up by human beings anyway. <laughs> so for the people who need like a tangible checklist, if I had to lay it out into some steps for you, I think it would look something like this. First thing, think about what it is you would do for the rest of your life if money was never an issue. Once you have that thing that you love to do, the next thing is to decide that that is what you do. Next, you're going to fully identify as someone who does that thing. Then you're going to surround yourself in an environment that helps you succeed as that person. And then the last step is a never ending one. It's the actual process itself after the decision has been made. All you can do in this step is grow, enjoy, and continue to evolve with that thing that you love to do so much might change, it might not. You never know what that thing that you love to do is going to turn into. Never thought that making videos would turn into me being on YouTube full time versus being a traditional filmmaker. So yeah, I really do think that deciding who you want to be is as simple as that. While the process will never be simple, it'll always be complex and always evolving, always changing, you can decide right now who it is that you want to be for the rest of your life. So if you were about to fly into another country and a flight attendant handed you an immigration form, what would you fill out underneath occupation? Thanks as always for watching. I love you.